What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Sheehan Show here on Shardog.com. My name is Sean Sheehan. I'm coming at you directly after one fight night 16. And when I say directly after, literally, uh, the main event ended 30 seconds ago at Mosa. I'm right here after late, uh, afterwards late at night uh, in Ireland. But again, it was a card that uh, that absolutely delivered with some very good uh, MMA fights, um, some very good stand-up as well. The submission grappling maybe not as good as usual, although um, Tyree Atolo did, did attempt to make it uh, a little bit better maybe than it was... Uh, it was it started out anyway, but all in all, a, a pretty good night in the world of uh, of combat sports and the uh, the mixed version of the martial arts. Let's uh, let's put it like that. Um, I think the one thing I learned a lot from this card, and it's not that we haven't learned it before, but it's it's maybe a good thing to uh, to just recast the thought. Um, I think the the ring is such a massive advantage for grapplers. Um, you know, from takedowns that when they happen in a cage, if you uh, if the person who was taken down gets to the cage, they can put their back against the cage and it helps them to get back up. Or if they're uh, stuck in a submission or something like that, if they're against the cage, it helps them to defend the submission. Whereas... Uh, and, and I don't know whether this is a good or a bad thing, right? Okay, but I, I think it's just uh, uh, a, a fact based on my opinion. Um, when you are in the ring and you are in a submission, the referee says stop, and he puts the submission on in the middle of the cage as well, making it easier for you to get that submission. Or if you have got the takedown, your opponent gets to the ring and they're about to like try to use the, the ropes to stand up or whatever, the referee will stop it and put you out into the middle of the cage, or they'll pull the ropes or whatever it might be, or they, they just simply don't have the, the hard base uh, to, ca- to get out from. So um, that's really thing that changes the game massively, I think. Now, the other way around then, you're looking at some of the, the Muay Thai, you're looking at some of the kickboxing. I'm sure when it goes into the cage with the four-ounce gloves and, and stuff, that changes it uh, as well. And there's definitely one uh, kickboxing fight here that uh, was massively changed, I think, by, by the uh, by the four-ounce gloves. But we should get to that. Um, right, let's get straight into it. We'll go from, uh, we'll go from top to bottom. Um, I'll, if you're just looking for the MMA fights, obviously we'll, we'll have them in order here so you can fire ahead to the MMA fights, but I'm going to give you a quick overview of the non-MMA fights, obviously get a little bit more in-depth on the MMA fights, and we'll uh, we'll go from there right after the bell here after one fight night 16. <laughs> So the main event was, uh, you know, we've had a lot of crossover fights recently. This was a real crossover fight with the Muay Thai uh, champ, uh, Jonathan Haggerty, taking on the MMA champ, um, Fabrizio Andrade, uh, in a, for the kickboxing championship. Um, and, you know, that might be a little bit unfair and on all uh, realms of it there because Andraj has fought in both Muay Thai and kickboxing, I believe, and Haggerty uh, as well, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, it was, uh, you know, a well-made fight and, and, and a fun fight, I suppose. But there was one guy who was dominant, and that was Jonathan Haggerty. From second one, I wrote down in my notes here co- the word comfortable. I just think he looked way more comfortable in there. Like, he said it as well. This, this guy's coming over from MMA. I don't care if he done the stand-up arts. This is my realm. And it, to be honest, it looked that way. He, he just was the boss in the very start. And I think it took until the second round for Andrade to get any sort of range altogether, and it immediately turned once he did that. But uh, let me just run you through uh, the, the the rest of the fight before I get to, uh, I suppose, the end of the fight. Um, Haggerty, I, I, sp- I spoke about it in the preview coming in, that Haggerty is a very much, you know, knees and elbows type of guy, and obviously we're switching from Muay Thai here to kickboxing, so you can't use uh, all of those weapons, especially the elbows. Um, so he had to adjust how he fought, and he was very light on his feet. I think that's how he adjusted. He's like... T- the, the kind of I suppose the step inside of range where he would be fighting normally as a Muay Thai fighter it was a step outside of range and 
uh, a movement of the feet into range where he was landing his shots. That was the difference here. I wonder, was that the issue for Andreas? It's probably a thing he'll look back on and say, right, I was expecting him to fight just a step inside of that range when he fought a step outside of it with a completely different style. He was supposed he was kind of caught off guard, but, you know, he had to fight a different style. So you're kind of guessing, I suppose, uh, at that stage. But... Uh, there was a lot of teeps from Haggerty early, a lot of one twos right down the middle, and to be honest, everything was landing. Um, the only things Andrade were throwing really were a, a few leg kicks, a few body kicks, but nothing that really put a dent. You know, it didn't really put a dent in Andrade at all, uh, or sorry, in Haggerty at all. Haggerty was way more varied. Like, if, uh, just thinking of the few of the shots he landed, obviously he was landing the jab and the, the, the straight right behind it, but he was landing the left hook. He was landing kicks to the body, kicks to the leg, with, you know, both sides. He was landing kind of a, a step in right hook over the top as well. There was a lot of shot and head kicks uh, as well, uh, thrown early if not landed. Um, but I'll use that word again, comfortable. Just way more comfortable. You could really see it in the midpoint, I suppose, of the first round. Um, when he started landing those body shots, and it was, it was kind of like, oh, I can throw these body shots and there's nothing coming back here. You, we, we saw a few um, of the Muay Thai and kickboxing fights earlier in the night. And that really is the one area where... You have to be very brave uh, in kickboxing the Muay Thai because when you're thrown to the body, you're you are sure fire going to get fire back. Um, but Haggerty didn't, you know, uh, he, he didn't get it back from Andrade. Um, and I suppose that kind of shows, like in, if it was an MMA fight, he might have got it back or he might have got caught the leg, he might have taken him down or whatever, but it just didn't seem to come back here. Um, and when you see... Haggerty landed to the head with different shots and Andrade just unable to get any range. Uh, it's it, it was all John Haggerty in the in that first round. Second round, um, Andrade. I think he realized that and he realized, okay, I'm going to have to come out and attack here. And he did. He landed maybe two or three shots at the start of the second round. But when Haggerty landed a huge right hand, it kind of put him back into like, oh God, I'm going to have to move back to what I was trying to do before, which wasn't successful. Uh, the jab, I thought, of Haggerty just started to take over in the second round. It had been... You know, had been nominated in the first round as well let's be honest but I thought it just he didn't maybe land as many of them in the second but they were they were controlling they were beautiful straight down the middle uh, all the time and then the beginning of the end came um, um, Andrade caught a head kick uh, hurt badly uh, and do you know what it was uh, and I said earlier it was after the best section he had in the fight because I thought actually after that right hand and once he started eating a few jabs Andrade actually started to walk in a little bit he he started he started to find his range a little bit he started to land a few shots to the head and he I think he landed three shots to the head in a row and it was probably the only three shots to the head he landed in the whole five or six minutes or whatever it uh it, obviously less than six minutes but you know round and a half um but that almost put him in a place where he was going to get hit worse and in a better range for Andrade. Uh, or sorry, a better range for Haggerty, who hurt him with the head kick. He attacked, he attacked, he attacked, and then he hit him with a hard knockdown with a straight right, stood up, and the referee stopped it there to give him the uh, the second round finish. Um, really dominant. You know, as I said, all that Andrade was able to land was a couple of leg kicks, those three shots to the head in the middle of the second, which, you know, I'm not saying they're big head shots or anything. It's literally three punches to the head that, you know, anyone would take. Uh, all the big shots landed by Haggerty. All the domination in the fight by Haggerty. The place where it took, uh, you know, the, 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 I suppose the placement of the fight, the running of the fight, the biggest shots in the fight, and obviously the end of the fight, it was all Janitor Haggerty in a really dominant win for him in for the kickboxing world title. In the comment event, we had the BJJ world title on the line, and that was won by Tyria Cholo. 
Uh, this one, not not exactly a, a classic. First three minutes, literally nothing happened. I spoke coming into it about how I've watched a lot of these, obviously, over the last while, and you know, I'm obviously no expert here. And when I say nothing happened, I guarantee you there's BJJ people out there go, "What are you talking about, Sean? They were playing for position and playing for head movement." Yeah, absolutely, of course, there, there was something happened, but. To, to my eye and to the vast majority of people's eye happening it was it was a bit boring for the start uh, Ritolo then he didn't necessarily pull guard because they, they said you're not allowed to pull guard but he did uh, maybe fl- a, a fly in a submission attempt or whatever uh, he, <laughs> but he basically pulled guard um, he went for the arm from there he went for a knee got on top got into the mount then kind of pulled the guillotine and I thought at that stage I thought he had it he got the catch there then uh, but um, Magomed did a good job of surviving that there was a triangle attempt late an armbar attempt late uh, but to no avail it went to a decision and Tyre Atolo ended up getting the win there look I think it was one of those ones where three minutes in very little had happened you got about six minutes in and you're kind of like oh nothing's going to <coughs> it's not that nothing's going to happen it's just that there's not going to be a finish here I felt like <laughs> and uh, when when that kind of happens it's like oh you know that's that's not great but it did get more exciting towards the end and Tyra Tolo got the win there then we had a Mai Tai matchup uh, which saw Sexton Sexan Sexan whose name I, I I always call him Seskin Sex Sek San uh, got his 200 win um, against Karim uh, Benoit 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 however you say um, very slow deliberate pace from Sek uh, San early uh, and when I say deliberate I mean like literally he deliberately fought a little bit slower uh, but v- so good defensively Karim landed a few jabs but Sexton landed way more in that first round and I thought he easily won it Karim started well with four shots to begin the f- uh, second round it was an even enough round for about 90 sex- seconds but then Sexton pushed the pace uh, just a lot and I think won that second round with the, the last minute or so of it um, the third round a very even round um but then Sexton just landed all the shots in the second half of that round and uh, ended up uh, ended up winning the decision there uh, over uh, over his opponent. Um, <coughs> that was it, it, like maybe I downplayed it a little bit. It was a, it was a fun fight. It was a good fight. The pace he pushed was very very good. After uh, as I said, the slower pace early almost drew him in. You know, to at that slower pace, and then once he upped it, maybe Kareem didn't up it at the same pace and, and got caught because of it. Um, then we had the top MMA fight of the night with Ali Amir against Ahmed Mushtaba. Uh, again, a competitive enough fight until the, the kind of the clearly better guy took over. Both landed a, a nice right hand early. Um, and Mushtaba then looked for the takedown, which I thought was very, very interesting. You know, he's uh, a good wrestler, but Halil Amir can fight everywhere, as we know. Um, so maybe it was a good game plan. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. He got tripped himself. Uh, I ended up on his back. And then he went for the Kimura, which was very, very close. Now, there was a very interesting decision which he made here, which, you know, I think it's a debate I could have with maybe my guy Harry Powell or something like that about the decision he made. So he got the Kimura. Um, and it was nearly on, right? But then Amir did what you should do. And, you know, the, the, the Frank Mir... Um, 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 Nogueira defense obviously where you hop your body over and you get out of it and obviously there could be a readjustment to keep it in or whatever or you hop your body over you get that means you get the guy off of you you've used the Kimura to get the sweep then you get back up right uh, what happened here was that Ali Lemire attempted to do that hop out of the Kimura and you know basically a handstand get your body out over it but Mushtaba hooked his legs and kept him in so he didn't allow himself to get a sweep and he backed himself getting the Kimura now he didn't get the Kimura and then when he didn't get it because he hadn't allowed uh, Amir basically to sweep himself Amir landed on top again landed elbows vicious ground and pound very nearly finished him like Herb Dean was waiting for the bell <laughs> let's be honest there he knew the bell was coming 
if it was any other time in the fight, he definitely would have stopped it. Uh, but he waited for the bell, round in it, and then it was stopped between rounds, I believe, by, um, I don't know, was it by the corner or Herb or who was it by? It wasn't very well explained, to be honest, but a uh, very good win for Halil Amir. It should have been stopped with five, ten seconds left uh, in the first round, but um, very, very good ground upon. And look, Mushtaba made a better show of himself, showing of himself this time, obviously, than he did against um, Sage last time out, but a good win for Halil Amir. Then we had a Mai Tai bout between Sinsamut and Shafi. Uh, Shafi, he just couldn't, he couldn't find that range early, and they were talking about he's the, uh, oh, is it the WBC or one of them, the a champion from from over there, and he's, uh, this is the fight I was talking about earlier where he was changed into four-ounce gloves and all of that. Um, Sinsamut was just landing counters, and on the, landing encounters and landing when he was on the attack, and the, Chaffee's first good shot was a right hand very late. I thought since would definitely won the first round. Uh, in the second round, I think Chaffee just realized I got to make this a dogfight, and he did. It was a close round. Neither landing anything massive. Since the, the, the one big thing that happened in that or second round was since looked very tired um, late. Uh, and he looked really tired in the third round. It was very scrappy in that third round until the last minute, and then Chaffee landed the much better shots. Since him, it was so tired, thought he might get knocked down or something like that. He didn't win the decision. I thought Chaffee probably won. He definitely won the third. I thought he probably won the second, but since him, it won the decision. I would, uh, I, w- I would, I would say he probably won one and two. Two was the swing round, you know, since would definitely won one, Chaffee definitely won three, the second round was very close, I, I would have leaned, Chaff- uh, leaned to Chaffee, but I'm no Muay Thai scoring expert, so, uh, you know, please uh, listen to the judges over me without a shadow of a doubt. Then we had a kickboxing matchup between Zhang uh, Paiman, who is the fighting rooster against Rui Botelho, another close one and somewhat controversial decision, I would uh, argue. Big head kick from the fighting rooster early, then a left kick. But he, you know, it looked like, oh God, he's going to get him out of here. But then there wasn't really much more in the first round for him. But Telia, um kind of grew into the round. Uh, the fighting rooster looked for the big shot throughout the round, which we know when that happens, it doesn't often land. But Telia was landing lovely combos. And I think he actually probably won the round, to be honest. Um... And then the second round, this was a round of the year contender. What a round this was. Uh, the, the rooster was way more varied early. Um, knocked down with a big left hook. There was a couple of knockdowns. They weren't called or anything, but they were definitely knockdowns. Rui again grew into the round, but I thought uh, the rooster kept landing in this round where he kind of stopped in the, the, the first round. Dropped in twice, landed the bigger shots. I thought, uh, I, I thought he won that round. So I had a one-man gun into the third Ball looking for the KO on the third, which turned it into kind of a little bit of a more scrappy bout. There were there was a lot of clinching. The ref was calling for him to stop clinching. Obviously, you're not allowed to clinch in that. But I thought uh, Zhang was landing harder, dropped him again, you know. And um, I thought he just done enough again, very, very close. Um, the split decision, though, uh, and Rui Batalha won. And a big upset there. The fighting rooster, obviously, you know, was fighting for the title, I think, last time out or maybe, maybe the one before that. Um, and they were kind of expecting him to win this and maybe get back towards that. But he doesn't get it. And Rui Batalha goes uh, goes forward and he might be in that talk now after that. Then we were back for uh, another MMA bout. And again, a, a, a shock in terms of the bookies here, if maybe not so much in terms of the fight itself. Although I did pick Mangbo to win and, and indeed she didn't. Um, Miura... Went for the immediate takedown, as she tends to do, but she again was stopped. Now, this this is very interesting, right? Because I think if this was in a cage, Mungbo would have won this fight because it would have been over. Because um, Miura tried to take her down, Mingbo got on top and was absolutely smashing her with ground and pound, but she was like outside of the ring. So I think it was Herb Dean, and I'm not criticizing Herb Dean or anything, it's just the way the way it is. Stopped the fight, brought them in, and put them back into the position, and it just wasn't the same. Um that completely changed the fight. Um, um Mingbo almost got into the mount, but Miura is so good on the ground. I spoke about it uh on the preview coming in. It's like she's not the best wrestler in the world. Not obviously not a good striker at all, you would say. But when she gets the fight to the ground, we thought saw her against uh Zhang uh uh Zhaiping. She couldn't get it to the ground, so she'd no chance. But when she did get it to the ground, even though she was on the bottom or whatever, 
uh, she turned it around. She, you know, she obviously had uh, had the the mount at one stage. Um, did Miura, but she, or did uh, Mong, and then she managed to get on top. Uh, head and arm control and then as we spoke about last week the scarf fall and got the finish in the first round it has to be said that ring is just a massive advantage for grapplers and it definitely showed that here for uh, for Akaya Mayora um, then we had the heavyweight mixed martial arts bout between uh, Kang Ji Woon and Bin Tynan and this you know, was stated by me as a wrestler versus striker matchup, and I favoured the striker coming in, but I was 100% wrong. The wrestler got the win. Ben Tynan did in this fight what he's never done before, and he went for the immediate takedown. Every other fight, he's kind of played around a bit, threw a few shots, but he got it. Uh, he went for it. Defended well by, by Kong initially, but again, that, cage, that lack of a cage, that ring just didn't allow him to get... I suppose a solid backing and to stop the takedown. Um, there was a struggle on the ground. He got mounted, arm triangle, defended that well though, got into half guard, got into full guard, uh, back to half, good ground, ground and pound there. But you're kind of thinking then, right, he's back on the feet now to start the second. It wasn't a, a whole load. Obviously, Tynan definitely won the round. Obviously, it scored as a whole, but you know what I mean. Um, and then Kong landed two left hands. And one of them looked like they might have dropped him, but it didn't. It was it was Tynan dropping down for a takedown, uh, which he got. Again, a scramble takedown, very, very good. And it was on the third try before he actually got on top and got him properly down. Nearly got the arm triangle, big ground and pound late. Uh, and that was basically the fight over because um, Kong was just so tired starting the second. He, he maybe got 30 seconds on the feet to start the second, but he would barely lift his hands. Tynan just got an easy takedown this time. Uh, got on top and uh, you know what this uh, it's one of those fights and I, I don't like saying this right but the arm triangle choke he was putting it on and his coaches were like you don't have it you don't adjust it and he didn't really he adjusted a little bit and uh, Kong tapped um, look it's very easy for me to say it wasn't in or anything like that he, he was really tired he knew there was no way of winning the fight and he tapped out. Like that that's what happened basically uh in this fight. But like I still really like Kong as a fighter. I I I would advise him to never fight in a ring again. <laughs> Only fight in a cage. And uh for Bin Tynan probably always fight in a ring because it's a major advantage. But I like Tynan versus um versus Bouchesha now. Hopefully that's a fight and get made and we can uh, we can go from there. But very good win for him. I think he moves to Five and oh now as a pro, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So uh yeah, definitely a top prospect. Looks in way better shape than he has done recently. Looks, you know, if you can add in a bit of striking to, to that wrestling, he's a dominant wrestler and uh very, very good prospect. And I'm looking forward to seeing Kong back again because he's an entertaining guy and uh, you know, you, you we need guys like that. Then we had Supergirl against uh, Christina Morales in kickboxing, and this was probably the biggest destruction uh, of the night. Morales absolutely beat her from pillar to post, as one of my colleagues over in Shardog wrote on, on the, the Twitter account. Um, an absolute destruction. Morales landing, how I would describe it is she landed the third shot constantly. So even if she didn't land the, the jab, even if she didn't land the next shot, that was maybe the both of them throwing. The, la the last person to land every time was Morales. Every time she was landing that third shot, I was like, pong, pong, pong. And maybe pong, pong didn't land, but pong landed, you know? The third one landed every single time. And Supergirl just had that head up in the air. She was just quicker than her. She was just better than her. Uh, and in the end, she kind of turned her back around and gave the ref no option but to stop it. And it was a brilliant win for Christina Morales. Um... It's you. This is one of these fights you need to go and watch. I think because like it was just when is when is Supergirl going to start fighting? When is she going to start defending? When is Morales going to stop winning here? And she didn't stop winning. She kept winning. She kept winning. She kept winning and overwhelmed her and won. This this actually happened in Supergirl's last fight and she managed to get through it. And I've watched a couple of her fights and it has happened, but Morales wouldn't let it go and it was a brilliant win for her. So uh, she moves on and I'm sure she'll be. Uh, you know, in the, in the talks for a, a, a title as well and one championship, and, and rightly so, but a performance like that. Um, and we're already to the last fight now. We've gone, gone through them very quickly, but um, MMA uh, opened up the card with the rematch between Jeremy Miado and Lido Adewang. My picks weren't very good this week, I'll be honest here. I picked Miado, um, and 
he did not win. Uh, Adi Wang won. I do feel though, if this fight was scored as uh, a scoring criteria, ten point must system, I think we had a would have won maybe or might have won it was a close enough fight but on uh when the fight is scored as a whole as it is at one championship i do think Adi Wang was the correct winner uh, in this one um Adi Wang dropped him hard with left hand early and that was it really <laughs> that, that won him the fight you know um loads of ground and pound uh herb dean did a good job here he let it go Meado got back up and he started technically fighting again which was very good it got him back into the fight but Adewang landed hard with a right and then a left hook and then a left right combo again from Adewang and he was really ahead in that round Miata was just kind of landing the counter left but it wasn't big enough or, or you know you know there, there was nothing big enough to kind of bring back what had happened early because he dropped him really hard early with that left hook second round Miata definitely was in control more um Lito was throwing those spinning forearms, but they're really no good. There was not landing from them. Lovely right hand though from Lito on maybe the midpoint of the round. Miata was landing shots, but nothing, not big, right, in the first four minutes. Then Miata landed two hard shots. Uh, there was a nice leg kick late from Adiwang, which probably, you know, was equal to maybe even slightly above them because they looked like they hurt Miata, who obviously had the injury in the, the last fight. Um, and they were very, very good stuff. I would describe, I have in my notes here, and I would describe him again as shin kicks. And there was a lot of shin kicks to start the um, the third round as well from Nito Adewang. Uh He was definitely slowing a bit in the third, like, and he was bleeding out of his uh, right eye, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. <coughs> they were both kind of looking for the KO in the third round, I thought. Miata was definitely landing better, but nodding again, nodding massive. Two nice uh, right hands to finish and a hard uh, left hook, right hook. Yeah, they definitely finished the fight well, but it just wasn't enough. Um, five scored as a whole, and I, I think uh, I think uh, Lito Adewang won because of that. But a good fight, a very very good fight, and uh, a good. Uh, it, it, it was kind of a pity that it wasn't uh, Miata who won it, so we could have the, <laughs> the the trilogy. But maybe down the line we'll have the trilogy. But Adewang uh, a justified and and correct winner there. Uh, all right, let me just quickly recap the results again. We'll, we'll start from the bottom. We'll go up. Lido Adewang defeated uh, Jeremy Addo in the uh, mixed martial arts by unanimous decision. Christina Morales defeated uh, Supergirl uh, Anna Jarosowak in the first round uh, of the um, kickboxing bout. Bin Tynan defeated uh, Kang Ji Won by arm triangle choke in the third round of their MMA about in the MMA about between Meng Bo and Ak- uh, Akaya Miura Miura won by Scarfold in the first round Rui Patelio then won a split decision in his kickboxing bout over the fighting rooster Sintamut then uh, won a unanimous decision over uh, Munshin Shafi uh, Ahmed Mashtaba fell to Halil Amir after the first round, uh, Sexan defeated Karim Benu via unanimous decision. Tyre Tola also won a unanimous decision in his grappling match against Magomed Abdul Kadyrov. And in the main event, Jonathan Haggerty got the second round TKO KO over the uh, MMA world champion in a kickboxing world championship match, Fabricio Andrade. All right, everyone, that's your recap of One Fight Night 16 from the Lumpany Stadium. My name is Sean Sheehan for Sherdog.com, and I'll see you all next time.